Well, I just got home. We got home from Ohio, and then uh, I got home for what seemed to be five seconds, and I went to Flamborough to race cash deals. I said I would. I wanted to go over. My first start at Flamborough Downs in quite a long time. Um, I thought she raced good. You know, I, I knew the two horses to beat were the horse from the outside, the eight, and, and Travis's horse. Coming out of the gate, everybody was kind of ducking. I knew we were going to get up there. I thought around 30 and a piece. We were still there, I think, 29 and 4, 29 and a piece. And I let Travis go, and as Travis... As I was letting him go, he said, you know, you can come back around if you want. Well, I'm watching this big, good-looking horse cross over to the front, and I know there is no way I'm beating that horse unless I put him in a bad spot. So I removed, I took my, you know, my sweet time removing the front. I slammed the brakes on a little bit. I could see the, the gentleman driving the eight horse coming. So now the horses to beat were on the front, coming off a tie-up and a poor line, but she did feel good. Um, I got Travis's horse who's in behind me, tight hold of him. I can see on the TV, Flambro put a TV up. Pretty cool. Um, I can see in the TV that Travis had a pretty good hold of him. The guy first over, luckily he was just kind of protecting his horse. I didn't really know the horse that well. Uh, Castiles was a little weak in the turns, but still a great attitude tonight. Down the backstretch, I felt like I had enough for a, a little bit of sprint down the lane. I didn't know if Travis's horse would have enough to, you know, a big horse like that, get him into the pass lane, put him in gear, and then come and beat me. I, I, I didn't think he would. It was pretty clear that he was the horse to beat as we got halfway around the last turn. I put Castiles in gear. She trotted her heart out all the way to the wire and got picked off fair and square. And I'd said to somebody, uh, I'd messaged me, Craig, one of our clients, had messaged me, said, I was going to call your drive into question. I wasn't. I was certain the only way I was going to beat that horse that was crossing over to the front at the quarter pole was to come back around and, and put him in a bad spot. I tried to. I tried my best to do it, but he still beat me fair and square. That's racing. But the takeaway was the cash deals raced well, bounced back after tying up um, from the point where she won and then bled to now. There's a whole lot of mess in the middle there, and I thought that she cleaned up really well tonight, did her work well, trotted her arse off to the wire, and raced well. I was really, really happy with her. Then uh, I got to watch Sassy race. I thought she raced okay. You know, I'd said to Megan afterwards, and again, this is all hindsight, I had said, you know, uh, I think, you know, when when I look and, and uh, she's a sassy beach, is like 15 to 1 or something going to the gate, and so is the other guy, the, the nice horse there, the Delray horse from the outside. You know, I think we need to, and again, this was after I got to watch it all unfold. You know, we need to find a, a spot where they're 2 to 1, not 12 to 1. And, you know, it is... Again, I don't have the information of the classes on the East Coast. Is there a 12 claiming fillies and mares at Saratoga or Monticello or, or Yonkers or somewhere? I have no idea. Is there a 10? Just put her in where she can win. Put her in where she can win. And the Delray guy, you know, it, leaving from the outside and being handicapped with that 25 claiming tag. And I know that, you know, Megan probably thought there was quite a few 25 claimers in there. Maybe the whole outside of the gate was. But as it turned out, they put their horses in for 24. We were in for 25, drew the outside. I think we just got to find a softer spot for for uh, both those horses. You know, we got the summer coming. Yeah, Megan just had Cutie Cumber dropped off, dropped off to her. That's a long-term horse, right? You know, again, Wemmel Brace for Landing head that way later, I think, after the good times. But Carantini, Carter Michael Dio, Spitfire Overseas, those horses are slated to race next month, pretty well five weeks from now. So, um those are long-term horses, right? We got stake races on the horizon and to worry about, you know, odds on Delray at 20 or 25 or, you know, uh, she's a sassy beach 10 or, or 12 or whatever. It's a pretty easy fix. Just here, this is where they should win. Put them in. There we go. And if somebody claims them, they claim them, they claim them, but that's what we bought them for, right? We were all going to play the claiming game with these two horses. So let's play it. The claiming game is simple. Put them in where they can win, win as many races as you can, and then Hopefully somebody doesn't take them. And if they do, they do. It's not a game I love. I don't love the claiming game, but I'm certain of one thing. That's kind of how you got to play it. So so we'll see how it shakes down. This is no, in any way, shape, or form, not a critique or an admonishment of, of what Megan does. Megan is a very good horseman, works her butt off, and she's like everybody else. You put all this hard work in, you don't want to see somebody else capitalize on it. Claim your horse and take your horse, and boom, they just drive forward. But I, I from what I can see, it looks like odds on Del Rey is probably a 20 claimer, 20 to 25 claimer, anywhere. Poconos, Yonkers, Meadowlands, doesn't matter. And the sassy filly, she's an okay horse, middle of the road, 10, 12. Maybe a Phillies and Maris 15, I don't know, but, um, you know, as I said, it's a simplistic view, but it's a view that we try to take with all the conditioned horses or all the claimers. Put them in where they go on the track or at two to three or to one, and that's where they belong. And if you can't find a class for that, that move them somewhere else, right? Or just drop them. In this case, just drop them until they 
you know, until they fit somewhere where they should win. You can't be worried about somebody trying to claim your horses if you're going to play the claiming game. And these two particular horses were bought for that very reason. So uh, it's not not really hard. I, as I said, I understand she, she probably wants to protect them a little bit because she puts a lot of work into them, right? And it's hard as a horse person. You don't want to put all that work in and then see somebody, as I said, benefit from it. But that's the world we live in. So with that, I'm going to call it a night. Good night for a cash deal. She raced good, raced her hard. Just got beat. Sassy raced good. Just maybe needs a little help with the classification. And, and uh, the Delray horse also, um, you know, it's always tough. It's tough for anybody to be in that handicap situation. For him to win from post eight means he's probably a 30, right? And that would be great. If he could go out and win a 25 from the outside, nobody would ever grab me. You keep pounding him in there. It's a great feeling. But I just don't think at the Pocono, such a speed-friendly track, having the outside post is a tough one. Could be wrong. I don't think I am. Anyway. Uh, all your videos are out. Everything is going good. Obviously, a uh, little hiccup uh, this week with with Jason's barn, but it is what it is. As I said, it'll play out. Um, it'll play out the way it's supposed to, and everybody just needs to take a step back and let everybody do their job. So, with that, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your Easter Sunday, all three and a half hours of it. I'm going to finish up my night in bed, watching TV, but watching a show called The Closer. I don't know how it ever got canceled. One of the best shows I've ever watched. Kira Sedgwick is the main actor, actress. Unfortunately, it's seven seasons, and I'm on my seventh season of it, but great show. You got a minute, and you're like me, and you're out there, and you're like, if you have a couple hours here and there to do something, and you really are at the mercy of uh, the clock, um, you know, you binge watch stuff all the time, and I've kind of wormed my way into watching this uh, this TV show on HB Ma HBO Max. Can't watch it in Canada unless I download it, which I did, um, called The Closer. So I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go watch another episode of The Closer, and I'm going to probably turn into bed, wake up tomorrow. Lots going on this week. No school, so the kids got to come with us to the barn. But we got Tiger, an unbeatable Kemp tomorrow. We have some horses racing all over North America this week. i got to head back early Tuesday to um, race Columbus and race two, race oh my gosh not a stellar night but nevertheless hopefully they won't do their work well and then Wednesday we got the, the usual suspects on Wednesday we got Hakati is in to go Dustin with Wally Hennessy is in to go I was wondering where he was and I had to look at the draw and when I go on the USTA I usually punch my name in and I'm like how did Dustin knock it in he is in, Wally's driving him so driver upgrade there. So hopefully Wally Hennessy, a Hall of Famer, can get him around and get him into the winner's circle. Uh, Hakati, who else do we got? We got Coupe de Ville is also in to go. I got another one also. Coupe de Ville, Hakati. Can't think of it. I'm focused on the qualifiers this week, to be honest. Patrick the Piranha's last prep before going to Plain Ridge will be this week. Um, Austral Hanover tailgate buzz will requalify. Uh, brace for landing on Friday just something about this horse so with that i'm gonna let you go you guys have a great night i hope you had a great weekend i hope you had a wonderful easter sunday with your family i did had a great weekend take care